Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 362, The Power of the Holy Spirit, part two. In this episode, we're going to read sections of the book of Acts to see how the believers in the first century church walked with the power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts, as we continue reading in God's Word and learning how to read God's Word, is the record of what the believers did in the first century church after they got born again after the Holy Spirit was available to them. I put in my notes here that you know to read 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 and read the book of Acts as often as you can this is what they did after they received the power the gift of the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Christ within them and you can see what they did. I'm going to go to a few records here in the book of Acts just to show you some of the things that was available to believers that are no different than we are as far as their body, soul, and spirit. They lived 2,000 years ago, different culture, but they have the same thing that we have. Look at, uh, we're right here, let's start in Acts chapter 3. We'll read 1 through 8. It says, And now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And this is what he said. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, lame men don't walk and leap and praise God, but this man did. He he went to Peter expecting to receive something. Peter says, Such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And you know what? He rose up and walked. Peter isn't Jesus Christ. Peter isn't God. Peter is a man with the Holy Spirit just like you. Just like you. Pretty wild, huh? It's great stuff. Look at Acts chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 4. And it says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Sounds like Philip doing what Jesus Christ told him to do. Jesus Christ said, go everywhere preaching the word. Right? Philip goes to Samaria and he preaches the word and he preaches Christ unto them. Verse 6, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which what? He did. Who did the miracles? Philip. Look at verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and them that were lame were what? Healed. Healed. And there was great joy in that city. I can imagine. Can you imagine a city where someone comes down and just starts preaching Christ unto them, telling them what's available, the things that I'm teaching you? And people possessed with devils got delivered from that. People with palsies were taken care of. People that were lame were what? Healed. I mean, it's great. It's a, that, that city was probably blessed. Look at verse 9. And there was a certain man called Simon, which aforetime, before time, 
in the same city you sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one. He's, he was like, I'm the great one. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Well, this man was not the great power of God. This man says here, you sorcery. That's hooky pookism, devil spirit stuff, Ouija boards, astrology, tarot cards, you know, all the stuff that the adversary uses. He was using that and he was saying he had the great power of God. And it says he bewitched the people in that city. But when Philip came down and preached the word, there was great joy in that city. Verse 11, And to him they have regarded, because that of a long time he had what? Bewitched them with sorcery. It says from the greatest to the least. That's like, you know, when the first thing in the morning you turn on your radio to see what the horoscope is for today. Or you get the newspaper and you go, let's see what Simon says today. It says from the greatest to the least gave he to Simon. Oh yeah, the moon is in such and such a place, you know, all the tarot cards say this. He bewitched them with sorcery for a long time. Verse 12 says, But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God. That's what Jesus Christ came and preached. He says, It's going to happen, buddy. And the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. Wow. Isn't that something? Simon himself believed also. He saw the miracles that Philip was doing. He said, wow, this is cool. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, wondering, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. You know what he was doing? He's going, man, look at Philip. Oh, look at the signs and miracles that he's doing. I mean, I used to do some good ones. But wow, look what he's doing. He's, I used to just, you know, put people in fogs. He's healing and delivering people. This is much better. So he was just watching what was going on. Verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive. That word receive is the Greek word lambano means receive into manifestation. Receive, not just like if you have a ball and I, you, and I throw you the ball and you catch it, you re, you're receiving it, right? But you're not doing anything with it. But this is when you throw the ball, I catch it, and then I pass it on. Receive so you can manifest it, so you can see it. And it says, and I'll read verse 15 again, and when they were come down, prayed for them that they might lambano, Show forth the Holy Spirit. For as yet it was fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They got born again, but they weren't manifesting any of the power yet. Then laid they their hands on them, and they lambano the Holy Spirit. The Greek word lambano, received. They manifested the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw, S-A-W, that laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hands he may lambano to give out, manifest the Holy Spirit. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, or rot with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this manner or this ministry, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. I want to stop there just for a second and say, see, when a person gets born again and they receive Holy Spirit, doesn't mean they're automatically going to change the way they think about things. He was, he was the great power of God. He, was, he used sorcery. He probably used money a lot to get what he wanted. And then so he tried to buy a lot in that ministry to be part of the ministry that Peter and John had. And they said, hey, your, your heart isn't right with God. 
Is he born again? Yeah. But his mind hasn't been changed yet. And so he says, hey, your heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse 22, repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Simon goes, Please pray for me that these things don't happen to me. And then the record goes on to another subject, and we don't know what if he prayed for him or not. It doesn't say. But I imagine that he did. If, he, if someone was to come to me and ask me to pray for him, I would pray for him. But isn't that wild? Just because you get born again doesn't mean you, your, your mind changes. You've got to read God's Word and line up your thoughts with God's Word to, mat, to, to tap into the resources of the more abundant life. And you know what it mostly is? Just confessing what the Word says. A positive confession according to the Word. The Word says things like, you can be healed. Now, to say things, well, yeah, yeah some people can be, but not me, is not speak in the word the word is thou shalt be healed by his stripes we are healed and in every category we just got to keep that word out there what does the word say let's go to Acts chapter 10 I'm suggesting that you spend much time reading the book of Acts I'm just pointing out a few sections in the book of Acts just to give you an idea of what this book of Acts is about it shows you the works that they did in the first century those believers did I'm going to start in verse 24 Acts 10 24 and I guess I'll give you a little running start this is Cornelius asked for Peter to come to his house and teach him the word Cornelius was a Gentile and Peter was a Judean by religion he was now part of the church of God but and so Peter after God works with him by giving him revelation three times, three times revelation, and finally Peter goes, okay, I better go with these people. So he goes with them. And verse 24, And then the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and dear friend. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. See, Peter knew that he was a man. He said, hey, Get up, man. What are you doing getting on the ground? But see, in, uh, in Greek religions, they had many gods, many types of gods. And they were very quick to fall on their faces. And so Peter says, You don't have to do that. Just get up. What do you want? <laughs> Basically, verse uh, 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said to them, Ye know how that is a lawful thing for a man that is of a Jew, Judean by religion, to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And I guess God did. He gave him revelation three times. Hey, go with these men. See, Peter would never have gone with the Gentile because he was raised a Judean. Being raised a Judean, he thought it was unlawful for him to hang out with people that weren't Judeans. But God gave him revelation three times. And even in the chapter 2, we saw that the Holy Spirit was available to all mankind. So Peter is sort of slow on the uptake. He's not slow in uh, operating signs, miracles, and wonders, but he's on the sl slow uptake of saying, oh yeah, the word's for everybody. So he goes, yeah, but God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Verse 29, Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, for what intent had ye sent for me? And Cornelius said, well, let me tell you, Four days ago I was fasted until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, an angel, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine, uh, thine arms 
are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. The angel told Cornelius to go send for Peter, and so that's what he did. He sent for him. Peter gets this revelation three times. Go with these men, don't worry. And so Peter's there. Verse 33, And immediately therefore I send to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded of God. And you know what he's basically saying? He's saying, Peter, tell us what God told you to tell us. That's what he's saying. He says, we don't know what you're going to tell us, but you tell us what God told you to tell us. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Okay, in the parentheses in the King James it says Lord of all. He's teaching them that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. One of the things you need to know to get born again. You've got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you have to confess that Jesus is Lord. So Peter is preaching that Jesus is Lord of all. That word I say ye you know which was published throughout all Judea. And began at Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Who is God with today? You don't know? Us. All right. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Judeans and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and they hanged on a tree. Him... God raised up the third day and showed him openly. What's Peter telling them? God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. He's always telling them, God raised him from the dead. And he's Lord of all. I like this stuff. Verse 41. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead the quick is another word for living to him giveth all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him should receive remission forgiveness of sins all that believe on him, on what he accomplished, they're going to receive forgiveness of sin. And while Peter Yates yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcised which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of Holy Spirit, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. What proved to Peter and those guys that, that the Cornelius and the Gentiles got born again is that they heard him speak with tongues while he was yet speaking. See how easy it is to speak in tongues? Shantale kulu malaka santa. You move your lips, your throat, your tongue, you say words, God has the utterance. It's easy to speak in tongues. And as Peter was teaching that wonderful word of God, these men started speaking in tongues. They didn't wait for Peter to say, go ahead, start speaking in tongues. They just did it. And it says, and they magnified God. Let's go to chapter 18, show you another one. But like I'm saying, you know, I, you know, you should read this book of Acts. It is full of wonderful things that the believers did in that first century church. Great stuff. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Judean 
to Judean by religion, uh, named Apollos, born of Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So here's this guy who's a really good preacher. He's good in the scriptures, eloquent man, great orator, can really do a good job. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and was fervent in the spirit, and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Wow. Let's just stop there for a second. Knowing only the baptism of John. In other words, he only got as far as John's baptism, which is a baptism of repentance. He didn't get as far as being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. He only got that far. He says, only knowing the baptism of John. You know what? In the world today, that's about as far as anybody goes. It's as far as most churches and religions will go, as far as the baptism of John. They don't go all the way to manifesting the power of God. He only knew that far in verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when... Aquila and Priscilla had heard him, they took unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. This verse blows my mind. Who in the heck are Aquila and Priscilla? They're just simple believers. They're simple believers who happen to have been with the Apostle Paul and they've known about getting born again, the promise of the Father. Jesus Christ has gone to the Father and they've known, hey, it's available to have a little more. Well, actually, a lot more. You're able to speak in tongues, miracles, healing, casting out devil spirits. You're able to walk with power. And they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And you know what? I love that these two simple believers did that. I also love that Apollos led them. And Apollos didn't go, well, who do you think you are? I am the great orator. He didn't do that. He listened to him. Verse 27. And when he had was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much, which had believed through grace. See, after he learned some more of the word of God, he was able to help out the believers even more. That's the way to be. If you can learn more and help out more people, give it up. Be available to do that. In verse 20, And he mightily convinced the Jews, the Judeans by religion, and that publicly and showing by the Scriptures, by the Word of God, that Jesus was the Christ. And it came to pass that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples Apollos left Ephesus he went to Corinth and helped those people out there but when Paul gets to Ephesus he finds the believers there in verse 2 he says unto them have you guys received Lombardo manifested the Holy Spirit since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit Wow. Why? Well, all that Apollos knew was the baptism of John. It took some believers giving them more information. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto him, John's baptism! Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. See, even John the Baptist was saying, hey, I'm cool, but there's one better. There's one better. His name's Jesus Christ. And when he came down, John goes, there he is, the Lamb of God, taketh away the sins of the world, right there. That's him. Some of them followed him. Some didn't, though. And Paul's saying, yeah, John did a great job with his baptism, his baptism of repentance. But, you know, remember there's some of them coming after him much better. Jesus Christ. Verse 5. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spake with tongues and what? Prophesied. They started manifesting Holy Spirit. And all the men were about twelve. And that doesn't mean they were twelve years old. It means there were that's how many there were about twelve. A group that would meet easily in this house. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning what? The kingdom of God that Jesus Christ spoke a lot about. But when divers, that word divers means many, when many were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way, before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. He said, hey, you guys don't want to believe the word? You don't want to believe that the power is available? You don't want to do that? Stay right here. We're going to go to the school down the road here, the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus both Judean by religion, and Greeks. He stayed at that school and taught the Word and taught the Word and taught the Word. And from those twelve people, and God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. From his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The, the Word moves in such a great way that Paul couldn't be everywhere at once. So they're just garments from them, handkerchiefs and aprons. They just put them near the sick people or on the sick people and they got healed. Why? Because they believed it. They started believing the word that I've been teaching in this class. And I'm just reading it to you. Verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon the them to call over them which had evil spirits by the name of the Lord Jesus saying we endure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches see what you got going on here you got people who had evil spirits on them exorcists calling over other people with devil spirits and they do this like this they go and we're talking to you by Jesus you know the one that Paul speaks and they were the seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and the chief of the priests which did so. These guys were up in the top echelons of the Jewish religion. They were the sons of Sceva, a Jew, a chief priest, which did so. Verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now, what a sight. <laughs> what a sight. You know, I think they should take some of these records in the, in the Bible and make movies out of them. I really do. This is so much better you'd see. They came out of the house, you know, running, wounded and naked. And this was uh, known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear or respect fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was what? Magnified. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. They knew that Jesus Christ came and accomplished it. They had Holy Spirit. Signs, miracles, and wonders were done. They were righteous as though they had never sinned. Man, they started to magnify the name of Jesus. Verse 18 says, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them which also used curious arts. This is talking about devil spirit stuff. You know, tarot cards, Ouija boards, the pendants, that type of stuff. And curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Now this is not like Hitler did in, in, uh, in Europe when he made everybody burn their books. There was, there was a fire and their books got burned, but this was by the freedom of their will. They went through their homes and said, We don't want this devil spirit stuff in our house no more. And they brought it out and they burned it. 
And they burned it and it was found to be 50,000 pieces of silver. Wow. Because they wanted to have the name of the Lord Jesus magnified. Look at verse 20. And so mightily grew the what? The word of God and prevailed. Man, this is where I want to be. So mightily grew that word of God. Not the religion, not the church, not some man's ministry, but the word of God was magnified. It grew. It was magnified and prevailed. Prevailed to the point where people were joy in that city everywhere. Signs, miracles, and wonders done in their lives. You know something? Being a believer and having this Word of God is not just uh, where you feel good on Sunday mornings. It's something that you can utilize every day to live victoriously. Every day to live victoriously, magnifying the name of the Lord Jesus. To live victoriously and to be with one another, to be able to heal, to deliver, to know that you're righteous, to walk with great power. That's available in this day and time. In the next episode, you operate the power of God. We're in this section of the class where we're going to look very closely with much detail into how to operate the power of God in our lives. This is the How to Live More Abundantly.